Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited today because we're doing something a little bit different, a little bit old school, and I've just gotten so many requests about how I do my makeup, and I thought I would show you my pretty, you know, go-to like makeup routine when I'm wanting to look really sexy and kind of how I infuse that with glamour magic and I'm also going to be answering some of your questions while I get ready. So I asked you all on Instagram some questions you had for me, so I have a bunch of them and I will be answering them and speaking of Instagram, I woke up today and my Instagram account was suspended. So I'm trying to figure that out. Either way, I should know by the time this video is up, so if it's suspended, for real, first of all, I'm gonna lose my shit, <laughs> um, so I will put the- I will put whatever Instagram account I have by the time of this video going up here. Hopefully it's my- hopefully everything gets sorted out and it's my normal Instagram, because I'm gonna be so upset if I lose all my stuff, and yeah, fuck Instagram. For whatever reason they decided I was too crazy <laughs> but anyway so I have a bunch of questions from you guys I'm just gonna get started um, I will show you what I use on my face I use this Eucerin it's way too much for most people I guarantee it um, I have pretty dry skin and I get eczema sometimes on my face and so it's it's like scent free it's very thick I usually put it on at night and then in the morning um, and then it makes my skin like really kind of dewy as you can see and I, I like it. I like a good dewy look um, If I have any dry patches usually it clears it up. So yeah, that's always what I start with iced mocha action happening And I've got a little spray tan action happening So my face is not quite as dark as My rest of my body because of the spray tan just never stays on my face since I'm always like putting lotion on and exfoliating or taking my makeup off so that's the action we're gonna darken it up match it thankfully I have a darker foundation didn't even wet my beauty blender y'all that's a tragedy I don't want to get up and wet it so it'll be fine it'll be fine I'm gonna use the moisture from my drink this is <laughs> when you've been doing makeup for like over 10 years like I have you know silly tricks <laughs> it actually worked yeah, that's impressive. Whatever, we don't even need it just yet. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you in on the action. This is the primer I like to use the most. This is by Ciate London, the Dewy Skin Primer. I think it's really good. Um, again, if you have oily skin, I wouldn't recommend this primer, but if you have dry skin or if you really like a dewy look, I think this is a great primer. So one thing I always do in terms of glamour magic is put sigils in my makeup always with the primer and the foundation. So what I'm gonna do today is a little heart because I feel like I need a little bit of love today. You can hear I'm almost out of this. <laughs> but this is just like any sort of sigil work that you might do. It just is signaling to your, signaling to your subconscious the kind of energy you wanna bring in today. That's like my favorite rune to work with. And it's okay if it doesn't look perfect. <laughs> like, a lot of the times it doesn't look perfect, but I think in this case it's like not necessary because it's like the intention that you're putting in. Love to see it. I'm gonna ask my first question now that I explained that. Christian Witch underscore STL asked, what is your favorite tarot book? What is your book recommendations for tarot? I'm gonna be so real with you guys. Like, I've never found a tarot book that I really liked or a tarot book that I felt like I don't know was really helpful I enjoyed oh what's it called I think it's called the creative tarot I'll put a picture up here I enjoyed that book because I felt like it gave a specific I really like when books will give like a specific read of tarot so like in Sophie St. Thomas's sex witch there's a portion where she talks about the tarot but it's all through the lens of like sex magic. And I like looking at tarot through those different sort of lenses. Just so you guys know, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. Really like this. And then Creative Tarot was all about reading tarot through the lens of being an artist. And I really like that. 
because I felt like it just gives you a different, oh lord, a different way to, yeah, to, to read tarot. Ignore the dark circles under my eyes. I am tired and it is my moon right now, so. But I like, I mean, I, I truly don't really, I don't have a book that I feel like I could say like, this is my favorite tarot book. So unfortunately, I don't have like a tarot book that I would recommend. I have a couple of tarot books that I used like as references, but again, like so far I think the best way to learn tarot is like, you know, reference the guidebook that comes with your deck and just read, just read the tarot. Just, it's one of those things you gotta just do it. Oh, I do have, you know what, let me take that back. I have the 72 degrees of wisdom. I haven't read it yet, but it is like the, it's referred to as like the best tarot book. These are my eyebrow tricks and tips. I always do the gel, brush them up because look how full my eyebrows look already. Um, you know, you kind of have a baseline for what you want. And then I use, it can be any sort of felt tipped eyeliner. I do this because I have, I have dark hair so I can use eyeliner, but I like a felt tipped one. I used to use like a liquid eyeliner, which is also good. But the felt tip, it gives you a lot of control and stuff, and I really like this. It's definitely not like the most natural you could ever do, but I think it's a good mix between like dramatic and natural. So I wanted to share with you guys today two new scents that I got from, you guessed it, Dossier. So if you're new here, I love Dossier. I collaborate with them often, and I literally have so many of their perfumes. I've been getting their perfumes for over a year, and I'm obsessed. So I'm so excited to show you guys the two new scents that I just got and I'm literally obsessed with these and I think these are perfect summer scents. So if you're new, if you don't know what Dossier is, basically they reproduce high-end luxury fragrances at a fraction of the price. They've got a risk-free system so you can get your perfumes. If you open it, you try it and it's not what you thought. There is a 30-day return policy. You can return it, no questions asked, you get a full refund. But what I really love is that they're website has like such a great description of their perfumes and you can read the reviews and see what people are saying. You can get fragrances that smell exactly like YSL Black Opium for example for literally so much more affordable. So the first one that I want to show you, this one actually has a bit of a story behind it. I've gotten this perfume before and then my mom visited and she loved it and she wanted it so I gave it to her but then I started to miss it and so I had to get another one for myself. And this perfume is called Ambery Cherry. It is inspired by Tom Ford Lost Cherry. It is so amazing. It really smells like a maraschino cherry. This is one of their unisex perfumes and it's so good. It really, I don't know, it's just, it's giving Lana Del Rey <laughs> because of the cherry. It's just so good. It's got notes of cherry, almond, cinnamon, cloves, rose, jasmine, plum, Peru balsam, tonka bean, and vanilla. This is literally, I'm so excited. I'm obsessed with this. Like it literally smells like a maraschino cherry. Okay, and the next scent I'm so excited about. This one was one of the ones I just could not wait for it to get here. And this is citrus tea inspired by Le Labo the Noir. Tay, it's Tay. I'm realizing that now I'm learning French and that's not the, it's, it's how you say tea in French. So Tay Noir 29, love to see. This is another unisex perfume. This perfume has like so many dimensions to it. It's got notes of bergamot, fig, black tea, bay leaf, tobacco, jasmine, vetiver, cedarwood, musk, hay, peach, and incense. So while it's got this like really nice fruit and tea energy, it's also got this like woody depth to it. I literally cannot wait to wear these scents out for summer. They feel so perfect. And thank you so much to Dossier for collaborating with me on this video. Lucky for you, you can get 5% off if you use my code LUNA5. I will have the link in the description below for you and let me know in the comments what perfumes you get and we will be scent twins. So thank you again to Dossier and let's get back to the video. Okay, Vintage Little One asked, how did I develop my song? You know what, y'all? A lot. I did a lot to do it. Um, what I'm doing with my eyebrows is I'm just doing like little strokes, brushing them up. I'm not doing any harsh lines. I'm really just mimicking like what brow hairs look like. Um, 
I actually have a behind the scenes video of my song if you're interested. It's on my Patreon, it's like an hour long. It goes into every part of the process because it was quite the process, honestly. So as I'm, as I'm doing this, I will go in with this Anastasia, I don't even know what like number this is, if it has a number. Um, it's just the eyebrow pen <laughs> brush. It's got the spoolie at the end that I kind of made it, I like it horizontal, so I did that. And I'll just take the angled brush and just like brush it out, kind of make it less harsh. Make sure that it is, you know, the vibe that I want it to. I tend to make my eyebrows straight, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, horizontal lines, they'll make your face look less long. That's why if you have like a tall forehead or a longer face, that's why bangs look really good on those faces because it's the same reason that horizontal stripes on shirts make you look wider. It's just the way our eyes work. Horizontal lines will shorten something. So I find that this makes my face look less long and it can make your forehead look less tall. I don't make the rules, okay? <laughs> but that's why I like a good straight brow. It also like kind of gives you, as you can see, like if it was to go down, it would give my eyes a more tired effect. With it going straight, it almost gives you like that sort of like, like that sort of facelift kind of look that's like really trendy right now. Um, probably wouldn't get my eyebrows microbladed straight because it's just a trend and so I'm sure in a little bit the trend will be something new. I don't do too much to the front of my brows anymore. I definitely used to and it just wasn't the vibe for me anymore. I will also be the first to tell you that eyebrows are not gonna always match and Oh my god, if I could tell you guys the amount of time I've just like sat here and tried to get my eyebrows to be perfectly even and I've just accepted that's not a reality and it is totally fine. So I'm gonna just go in with concealer. I personally like this Bare Minerals original concealer. Um, I used to use like shape tape and all that kind of stuff. I was a big NARS girl for a while but a lot of those broke my skin out and I haven't had any problems with bare minerals. So this just helps you to kind of straighten it up if there's any like, especially if you've got a dewy base underneath, sometimes the colors can smear. This helps to make it really clean. One thing I try not to do is I try not to take the concealer much past like this point because then it can make, it can just make the tail end look, a, or the front end I don't know, look a little too strong for me. And if that happens, like it's kind of happening on this side, <laughs> I'll just kind of blot the concealer into the eyebrow to uh, lighten it up a little bit. I used to, but the thing is that your preferences will change as you do makeup. So allow your preferences to change and you don't have to be hard on yourself. Cause I was a 2016 box eyebrow girly too. <laughs> so yeah, I'll kind of just like pat the concealer over here. Of course, when I'm filming, I'm having a weird eyebrow day. I'm really thankful when I'm not having any eczema, like other than the dark circles, my eye or my uh, skin is really not problematic at all. Like sometimes it's dry and of course, when I have eczema, that's not fun, but when it's clear, it's just like, oh, I'm so thankful. And honestly, I think I deserve it because I've had many years of just like eczema all over my skin. And so I feel really thankful. I'm in my straight eyebrow era. I could sit here and be nitpicky and correct my eyebrows because that is one area where I just, I can get very perfectionistic about it. Um, but I can feel like another question I got is, about favorite witchy movies. And I actually, I just watched The Craft for the first time. Um, and I thought that was good. I liked it. I, I don't know if it's my favorite witchy movie. I am using this Fenty Beauty um, foundation. I think, I don't know if it's discontinued or what. It's the Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation. This is the shade 190. 
this is pretty dark for me it's not like weirdly dark but it's definitely a great color for when i'm spray tanned and this is the morphe m439 brush brings me back to my makeup artist days and my uh you know what was i saying <laughs> when i used to be a beauty youtuber so i'm putting this on now you can also do the sigils in the foundation instead of the primer or both but i feel like good with the with what i did in my primer so i don't feel like i need to do it again um also how do you best keep a spiritual routine while being busy so that's a question that's it's a, it's a great question <laughs> and i wish i had the answer because <laughs> i fall out of routine very often when i'm busy also with this foundation i am focusing it on this like bottom third of my face um i don't like to overdo foundation i will put a little bit under my eyes but it's kind of just like whatever residually is left on the brush and same with my forehead i don't feel like i need a lot on my forehead this is more just a good blend of the spray tan up you know blending it into my neck of course um i might put a little bit more on my brush just like the tiniest bit you ever saw yeah it is so hard to keep a spiritual routine when you're busy and that's why i think i think it's less about routine and more about like little mundane things that bring you back to your spiritual center so for me like anything i do is spiritual because it's just so embedded in my life so like when i'm cleaning the house like that is an energetic cleansing so if i don't have time to do like a smoke cleanse you know I'm gonna be cleaning my house anyways so when i'm cleaning my house i'm using like visualization or maybe i am using like essential oils or something like that or like sound or something um to kind of bring in that energetic cleansing as well um i like make my floor washes i don't do any um like chemical cleaner for floors uh, i used to and then I was like, I can just make this. So I just started making it. I just do like, I don't do a whole lot of concealer because I don't want it to get cakey. Um, I am starting 25. I'm starting to get little fine lines under my eyes. So I don't like to go crazy with the concealer because I don't want it to get cakey and look weird. Um, but yeah, so I just like do all my mundane things with you know spiritual intentions behind it i make my bed every morning and i'll smoke cleanse it and turn on like the air purifier for cleansing energy and i mean like i don't pull tarot meditate do yoga like every day like i used to and i want to start bringing in at least yoga because i think yoga is very meditative um but i haven't done that yet so yeah i think you know in and like the shower and stuff like doing an energy cleanse with the water. So what, I guess my answer is just like through like little mundane things that you're already going to do. Niz Sita, sorry if I said that wrong, said tips for new witches question mark, smiley face. Um, I think my biggest tip would just be like, I don't know, have fun, research, and just do the damn thing. I think it's so easy to get stuck in the whole like, research phase and like to not do anything but i feel like some of the most common questions i get are like how do i get started reading tarot and it's like you just have to read it you just have to jump into it and i think there's a lot of it's like kind of scary i know when i first started it was just like the fear of messing something up and it being catastrophic was so you know scary but i don't think it's actually like generally speaking if you're just doing like don't do any crazy things you know, don't jump in with like a hex off the bat or a freaking love spell. Don't do anything stupid. But like if you're just starting out with like reading tarot, like just do it. Jump in there. Make mistakes because none of the mistakes you're going to make. Like I made so many silly mistakes and I wouldn't have learned from it if I didn't at least try. Anyway, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm using this e.l.f. putty bronzer in the shade... Oh. It doesn't say i think this is called getting shady or something like that or like throwing shade <laughs> i don't know it's like a nice cool toned uh kind of cream bronzer or not even bronzer it's i'm using it for a contour 
and I am just for my forehead I basically did the whole thing <laughs> you know hide it take it away and I am doing my contour my cheekbone line I have pretty good natural cheekbones so it's pretty simple for me to find the placement but if you don't know I would just start at like the top of your ear and then bring it down to about like the corner of your mouth but like not that far you know what I'm saying and I like to bring it down like that personally not for everyone I have a pretty wide jaw and I like to kind of accentuate that I guess and like then I just kind of really go into that jaw you can cleanse your jaw if you want that might give you TMJ I had that for a couple years when <laughs> I was in college I went to the doctor and I was like why do I have that and he was like are you stressed and I was like I'm paying for my college yeah I'm stressed and I was seeing opera all the time as one does okay scouty willow wants to know any tips for pole dancing um I think going to a pole dancing class is so helpful like if you don't have a pole you're obviously going to be going there um but I think going to a pole dancing class is really fun really helpful and letting yourself take it slow I think something I struggle with is like even now I mean especially now because I've been out of it for a while and I'm getting back into it um like I get so excited about some of the more advanced moves but I fail to give myself a proper you know like base I guess for that or I'll fall out of it for a while and I'll jump back into extreme moves and then tire myself out so quickly and so just like let yourself be a beginner and have fun I think that a big thing is like a lot of times people who have like just started pole dancing you can tell you can tell <laughs> because there's no riz <laughs> you've got to bring the riz you've got to have fun you know I think a lot of times and it's probably just a personal preference but sell it sell it have fun you know be sexy like have a good time you know be confident have fun be okay with making mistakes you know so a portion of what I'm doing with contour is glamour magic in a way it's different than what we do with primer and foundation but for me I think this is just a me thing and this is a big thing with glamour magic you gotta make a Pinterest board and get in touch with what you find attractive I love a good sharp I've talked about this before I love a good sharp jawline and contour it makes me feel very sexy it makes me feel very powerful I feel like I'm channeling Angelina Jolie energy you know like just the people that I think are very attractive like I obviously like with my tattoos and like my dark hair I think a big thing that makes me feel empowered is a sort of like intensity like a sort of dramatic energy and so like if you're going for more of a coquette look or anything like that or a more innocent look like maybe this isn't what you'd go for but for me this this helps with my glamour magic of being empowered powerful feeling like a bad bitch feeling sexy like yeah I don't know that's just my little two cents about that also in a more technical makeup standpoint I am doing a heavy uh, not heavy but I'm doing a cream base um, because again like I said I have very not very dry skin like I used to but I do tend to be normal to dry so like I wouldn't feel comfortable with like only powder that's just not what I like and I do like a dewy finish to my kind of face so if you have oily skin you might not want to do all this um, cream I do feel like it's nice and I will top it with powder but I just so just so you know like if you have oily skin this might not be the best you might want to skip the cream products um, especially if you feel like your pores get clogged very easily um, you know it might not be the move for you just what I like next question this is like in the realm of pole dancing I love how many people are asking about pole it's so fun and I think it's Antonia in P I hope I pronounced that right uh, a novice pole dancer here do you use your pole in rituals or to manifest something if so how this is so funny because I um, actually have yeah and it was like so impromptu and I had never heard of anyone talk about it and now I'm for those of you wondering being a psycho about how my contour is I'm just like 
I've had some bad times where I did not check the sides. Get yourself a hand mirror. Check the sides and then do some like <laughs> kind of movement to see if you're, you know, if it's blended. Because there's been times when it's lying. You find out in pictures later, it's not good for anyone. So actually last year, I think it was the Capricorn full moon, I did a, I suppose you could call it like glamour magic, sex magic, manifestation kind of thing. Um, and so I did like, got in lingerie, I got my makeup all done, and I used my pole and my manifestation. And really it was just, I mean, as you know, a big part of you know, your spells or your manifestations, it's that raising the energy section of of the spell. And what is what raises the energy more than like dancing, you know? Um, and so I basically, just for that portion of the spell, I don't remember exactly like all I did, but for the raising the energy portion of the spell, I did a little sexy pole dance for myself. Um, are there any, this is also Antonia and P, are there any do's and don'ts when it comes to glamour magic? So, let me think about do's and don'ts. I mean, do whatever feels good. It's all about how it feels for you, and you need to be embodying the energy that you want to embody. So, focus on the feeling. I would say the biggest don't is like, don't doubt yourself. I guess watch out for like, inner critique. Like if you're trying to do like a boss bitch, you know, wearing a blazer for a job interview or whatever, don't be like, oh, it looks so stupid, like, no one's gonna take me seriously. Don't talk yourself down, you know? Like, you gotta be your biggest supporter, because I think the big thing with glamour magic is it's all, I mean, you're not, like, you're not actually changing anything. You're not making another person view you differently. Uh, I, w I watched The Craft this weekend, and it's funny how they portray glamour magic. It's not like that. In real life, it's more of like embodying it within yourself and because you see it and you have the confidence, other people see it. So it really starts with you. So don't doubt yourself. You need to be your biggest cheerleader, your biggest supporter. And if that feels out of reach, fake it till you make it, okay? I really think that is so valuable. Which Hazel Siren says would love you to do another neurodivergent vid. That's how I first found you on YouTube. Oh, that's so cute. Thank you. Um... I, I think the burnout one that I just put out was is pretty good for that, but yeah, let me think. I'll think about that and I'll do some more because your girl is very neurodivergent and it is a lifestyle. Uh, which Hazel Siren also says, I struggle with time management. How could you make, I think what they're saying is how could you make it into a fast routine but still ritualistic? Probably talking about glamour magic. Honestly, listen, the like when I'm brushing my hair or even when I'm putting on lotion, while you're doing that repetitive movement, your body enters a sort of flow state, especially since it's something we've been doing our whole lives, basically. Um, and I'll just say a mantra. That's something so easy. Like, if you're just, again, like, easiest things with, with ritual and magic and stuff is just put, infuse it into what you're already doing. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're already going to brush your hair. So I am beautiful. I am loved. I am worthy. For something I was doing the other day, I don't even remember what I was doing. I don't know if I was brushing my hair or what, but just like as I was, maybe I was braiding my hair and it was just like a protection thing. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just while you're doing something you're already gonna do, put a mantra in there, throw it in there, who cares? Or even like if you have like a, a special lipstick that you've kind of enchanted to be like your con, like I have a pair of earrings that I've infused with like luck. So when I, I swear you guys, whenever I wear those earrings, have a great day, I usually get something for free, or I find something for a super great deal, you know, like, so it's like my lucky earring, so whenever I'm like, oh, I could use some luck, I could use some, you know, something free or some money, I put on those earrings, so having something pre-infused with that energy, so you just put it on, or like I said, like a special lipstick or something, or if you're not somebody who wants to wear makeup, or maybe can't, do a chapstick. You know, no one has to see it for it to work. It's not about other people perceiving it. Silveretta Rose, what is up, queen? What's your favorite Lana Del Rey song and favorite tarot or oracle card to pull? A double whammy. So really quickly, I'm gonna do a little horizontal line and I'm gonna do it right here. I kind of use the side of my face to see where I should do it. I do it here. And then I'm also going to take this line up a little further, which might look crazy, but it's what I like. And I also, just for mine, 
I drag this up. And you know what? This might look like shit. Who knows? Probably in five years, I'll be like, what am I doing? And that's the fun thing about makeup is it's not permanent. Play around, make mistakes, have fun. And check this because this is another place where if you, especially in real life, do not blend it, it can look a little funky. Favorite Lana Del Rey song. It's so hard. It's so hard. I really have recently been on a Diet Mountain Dew kick. And I also, I love her unreleased songs. All of them are so unhinged and I just think it's so fun. Um, I think that my like favorite song that's always kind of stayed is Off to the Races. I think it's a really fun beat. I think it's a really fun song. Um, I like that kind of unhinged Lana era. Just finishing out the contour with this. It's so funny. I've had so many people ask for a makeup routine and it's just really cute because when I started YouTube, I started as a beauty guru and I never had any luck. I never, I never had a whole lot of views. Kind of like the gem goddess. I was watching a podcast with her on it. If you guys are familiar with her, she does tarot. She was talking about that too. She started as a beauty YouTuber and then she started doing tarot and just popped off. And I thought that was really funny because it was kind of similar. So it's like really cute that you guys want to see makeup because I love doing it. Favorite tarot or oracle card to pull? I love pulling the Empress because that's my card in terms of like numerology. I'm a life path three and being a Taurus rising, you know, a lot of Empress energy here. So I love pulling the Empress. I love pulling the High Priestess. I know some people read it in not a super great way, but I like, I like it every time. I just like it. It's just a good card. I obviously love the star. I feel like the star is a good card as a Pisces moon because it gives you hope. It's like, I feel like it's validating of your experiences. Um, and it's also like, hey, things are gonna get better. Poison, I always say your name wrong. I'm so sorry, because I know you're in the chat. Poison Isley? I wanna say Ily, because I always think of like Poison Ivy. But I think it's Poison Isley. It says, in what year of your life do you think you've had the most growth as a person? I have grown so much. I was just in a class, here goes me on another ramble. I was just in a class about the moon phases in your natal chart. And it was talking about my moon phase, which is the balsamic moon, which is basically the waning crescent. And it was talking about how wise we are and how we just have this innate wisdom and so much growth. And it was so accurate. You can see I love Anastasia Beverly Hills, probably my favorite brand. This is just a palette. It's even not my favorite. I don't even like it that much, but I still use it. It's uh, just kind of a warm bronzer. I do like this highlight quite a bit, but I'm really just going in with a bronzer. Over, well, you know what? Actually, no. My other favorite brand. I'm an expensive girly. This is so Taurus of me. Natasha Denona, and this palette is absolutely destroyed. The top part of it broke, um, but this is the Natasha Denona Ayana eyeshadow palette. And I'm gonna use this shade right here as a contour because it's really nice and cool tone. So I'm gonna do that to set my contour. And is this looking blended? The shadows here are very dark. And so I'm like, is it just me? Um, so I've had a lot of growth in my life so far, even though I'm really young still, I just have been through a lot of shit. I think when I was 19, a lot of things happened that were not fun. <laughs> But I don't even think I grew at that time. I think my biggest growth was probably like being 22. I think I grew a lot. That was around the pandemic. Um, I was really getting intense with my spirituality. I had been on a spiritual journey for, you know, years at that point. But I was like really settling down into a specific area. It's pretty intense but I like it. Um, and yeah, I just, I had a really, a lot of changes happen around that time. I got married that year. Um, I guess 21 to 22 was like big transformation for me. So also about the time my boobs came in. So, you know, <laughs> if, if you're waiting, if you're like, oh, I'm 18 and I still don't have mine yet. Just wait, it could have happened at any time, really. Swamp Water Pearl, love you for that. 
says, have you ever been in an unhappy relationship? If so, how did you leave slash fix it? Such a good question. Um, so, yikes. <laughs> yes, I have. And you know what? I think there's, it's noble to try to fix relationships. And I think some can be fixed if you have both parties willing to work and willing to see where they're wrong and you know if you do it in enough time you can but if in my case in that relationship I had been trying to work on it and they were kind of oblivious to it and ended up just becoming apathetic I guess and so if you wait that long then then I don't know I don't think it's worth it you have to have both people still involved and I was just so tired of being the only one trying and so you know, you've got to appreciate and try in your relationships and not not give up. Um, because if you give up, the other person will probably give up too. <laughs> um, so I think that if there's ever anything toxic or anything that makes, you know, that is unhealthy or feels icky, then it's not worth it. Like there's a point where it's like, you can't let yourself be used and and then there's a point where it's like if you're in a relationship that you love and you guys are just kind of different and there's things you can work on, then absolutely work to fix that because all relationships require work. They're never perfect. They're never just like, oh my god. I mean, maybe they are. <laughs> maybe they are. <laughs> I've never had a perfect relationship, but every relationship requires work and compromise. But if it's ever abusive or unhealthy or making you sick, like it was in my case, we're gonna get out of there. Nothing is worth that. There are plenty of fish in the sea. There are plenty of men out there. There are plenty of women out there. You know, you deserve love and you really shouldn't lower your expectations. Um, what I'm doing with this blush, so basically I put, I put bronzer in the general bronzer areas and on my neck too. And now I'm using, this is my favorite freaking blush. I love it. This is Il Maquillage Lolita. This is a mineral baked blush. It's this really pretty pink color. Um, it's pretty cool tone. Again, I love cool tone stuff. And it's got this really pretty sheen to it. Like, obsessed. I love it. I really love it. I put it all over my freaking face. I used to hate blush because of my eczema. My skin was always very red. I found out through trial and error that if you have pale skin, even if you don't put on bronzer or anything, if I only put on one thing, I want to put on... Well, that's not true. It would be eyebrows and then mascara. And then blush because it livens you up so much so if you're pale you're feeling washed out even if you're not pale but you're feeling washed out blush is a lifesaver and because of my red skin i was like no i'm never wearing blush why would i want to add blush i put on foundation to cover it well it's about specifically placed blush do you know what i'm saying so it really does a lot it brightens you up it makes you look more alive because sometimes i feel like jennifer check in jennifer's body when she's like ill <laughs> That's how I feel a lot of the time. So I pack on a good amount of blush. I like it. I think it's nice. It makes me feel alive and flowy. Long Live The Queen OX says, what brand eyeshadow do you use for your summer goddess look? Y'all, I use so many different brands. I like Natasha Denona, Anastasia Beverly Hills. NYX is a really good drugstore brand. Um, I have so many. I used to get BoxyCharm. <laughs> And my mom also, and she doesn't wear a lot of eyeshadows, so she would always give me her palettes, and I would get a lot of palettes, so I have so many. But I would say usually Natasha Denona, like, I have a lot of Natasha Denona that I, ow, that I love, and I think that it's just the creamiest, nicest eyeshadow in the game. Fairy Bean says, would you ever make a tarot or oracle deck? That is a crazy question to ask. I don't know why you'd ask that. I <laughs> I will tell you guys it is something all I'm gonna say is it's something that's been on my noggin for a while for a long time and I would not be surprised if that's something you saw in the next few years okay so mark your calendars for the next few years I would absolutely and I may have already been thinking about it path of enlightenment um, says, I have two little kids and want to incorporate spirituality and witchcraft and how I raise them. Do you have any advice on how to do that or what you would do? So, 
I'm gonna get started on my eyes because I feel like the face well you know what let me do highlight really quick I'm gonna preface with I don't have children and that is a whole expedition that I have never been on I respect you so much for doing that um, I so I don't have kids so if I say something stupid <laughs> Keep that in mind. I don't actually know what I'm talking about in terms of children. Okay, so I'm taking this highlight. I'll show you what I use. It is, you know what, I can't really because I've got highlight in here. This is Juvia's Place. And this is the, oh god, Cleo. This is my favorite highlight in the entire world. Oh my god, it is so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous on fair skin. It is freaking gold. I love it. So, um, what was I saying? So I don't have kids. So I'm sorry if... I'm dumb or something, you know? I've thought about this for me personally of like how much do I want to incorporate into my kid's life because I was raised Catholic and I get it. Like that's what you're told, to, you're told to raise your kids in that. I don't think I want to raise my kids in any religion because I just feel like I want them to be able to know that there are a lot of options out there and they are free to choose whatever they want, though I know that they will see me doing stuff. And I, I mean, yeah, I like when I write my book of shadows, I do it with the thought of like my kids someday looking at it and, you know, reading about it and, and stuff like that. Um, so I think, I don't know, it depends on like their age and stuff, but I mean, I would of course like i have them, I mean, I think I'll probably have them participate in, like, the Sabbaths with me, show them how I do spells if they're ever interested. So, yeah, I think I would just, like, I don't know. I don't know, that's a hard question, because, like, again, I don't have kids. I don't even know what it's like. Yeah, I think just having open conversations with them, and, you know, me and my husband have differing beliefs, so I think that'll actually be really nice and easy to say, like, this is what mom believes, but dad doesn't, you know, he has his own beliefs and whatever. And so it'll be nice to be like, neither of us are right or wrong. Like you, you know, take what you feel like is good. I would probably just like let them sit in with me on like rituals and stuff if they wanted to explain to them their birth chart. Yeah, sorry if that's, a, sorry if that's not a good answer. I don't really know, I guess. I like to put highlighter almost everywhere. Put it here. I think I've noticed that when I put it right here, it, it makes my face look so dewy and people are always like, oh my god, you're glowing. And I'm like, am I? Or is it Juvia's place? <laughs> okay, so face is done and now we're gonna do eyes and I'm just gonna probably fast motion this and walk you guys through how I do my eyes. I'll just preface with, I don't use an eyeshadow primer, I probably should, but that's not the life I'm living. What I like to do with my eyes is go for a kind of like what they call a fox eye effect. So my eyes, this is what they look like naturally. I can't tell if they're downturned or anything. I don't really know. Sometimes I feel like they're downturned. And sometimes I don't. I don't know what kind of eyes I have, so. And they're not hooded. I feel like everyone is saying like, this is a tutorial for hooded eyes and then they just don't have hooded eyes um, or like true hooded eyes. I think that I do have like very prominent brow bones. Um, I wouldn't say it's like, deep set eyes but maybe they are um but yeah brow bones are pretty prominent so there is even though they're not hooded like i can't do a traditional cat eye without some modifications you guys know i love a good cat eye so in terms of like i'm so this is so second nature for me so the glamour magic is just kind of all embedded into this this is just how i feel confident i guess when i really want like a confidence boost and again not that I'm tight lining my eye by the way. Not that I don't feel confident without makeup because I do and I have gotten to a place where I do, but when I want to feel like an absolute bad bitch, this is, this is the makeup look I do. This is my go-to palette for this sort of look. You don't have to spend Natasha Denona money um, to get this. You just, for this kind of look, you'll want like a cool toned, medium brown-ish smoky energy. Um, I'm also going to pull from this other Natasha Denona palette. <laughs> I might pull from all three of them. This one is the Peak, and the reason I like this one is because 
this shade right here is like a perfect tone for base for me. Um, so I think finding, even if it's just like a single eyeshadow, a good base color for you is so important because like the base tone in this palette, it's just too dark. So it's, it's a little crazy. Yeah. So I'll just take this shade again. I mean, I just like, I don't use an eyeshadow base. I really just, I just use whatever concealer got left on my eye. I'm going to use this Morphe brush. This is kind of like a tapered, this is kind of like a tapered crease brush, very thin, which I like because my lids aren't super big and I'm using that same contour shade and this is why you don't even need that many colors especially if you're just doing something basic i usually do the bottom lash line mostly the outer corner um and this is where i feel like my eyes are a little downturned because if i just go straight i can feel my brow bone pretty heavy right here so I have to be mindful of that. And this is where learning your eye anatomy comes in handy. So another thing is I like to smile and that'll show me if I'll just do a cat eye and I smile, sometimes it'll like go down and be weird. So I smile. <laughs> Gotta have a good fluffy brush. These are the best for blending. Nothing on it, just blending. I'm going to take this flat square guy and take the dark brown color. I'm kind of starting to do like an eyeliner thing. Personally, I like a lot of good shimmer. And if you're getting to that age, like me, where you're starting to get some fine lines under your eyes, I like to take this flat brush again. And first of all, I elongate my eyes by doing a line like a bit under my actual lash line close to like the tear duct and then I go like basically wherever <laughs> wherever you see those under eye lines you know what we just cover it up <laughs> makes your eye look bigger too and fluff it out and I don't know I don't mind a bit of it the whole clean girl aesthetic is not for me <laughs> you know what I'm saying so I don't mind if it's a bit messy One of my favorite things to do in my makeup routine is lashes and I think that um, basically my favorite thing is to cut these guys like when I'm going for a very kind of like not natural of course but like I don't want to look like I'm wearing fake lashes but I want my lashes to look really long is I'll just cut these in half and yeah usually anyways like when I wear these they're too long so I'm already cutting off a little bit so I already like have some you know like pre-cut basically and I'll just throw these on the ends of my lashes and because the band is so thin on these you really can't tell that I'm wearing them so it's really nice and these are the Ardell 113 Wispies so as you can see because the band's not coming all the way up to the inner corner when my eyes are open you really can't tell that I have them on now when they're closed you might be able to see a bit of the glue it's still drying and once it's dried, I'll go back and look and see if there's anything showing. And then you can just put some eyeliner over that. And then, really can't tell. And they're so comfortable. I love Ardell's because they're so comfy. And that's like a huge thing for me if I'm feeling like these big heavy lashes on. I don't always want to feel that. So I feel like these are really nice. And having them be just in the outer corner... Um, they give you that, again, like, cat eye sort of, like, lifted effect. And so for lips, I always overline them, especially because my lip filler, it's been, like, it's been a year and a half. So the lip filler is, I mean, it's not even all the way gone, but it is definitely less. And so I like to overline my lips. I have two favorite lip liners. They're both NYX, the Suede Matte Lip Liner. Um, this is in Lavender and Lace. I think this is a really nice, um, like, kind of cool tone neutral and then this one is vintage and it's a bit more dark and warm i'm actually i'm probably gonna go for the vintage what's it called the lavender and lace and i really like a couple of different 
I have a couple different lipsticks that I really like. I like this NYX Suede in Violet Smoke. It's pretty cool tone though, and sometimes it's a little bit much, but it's like a nice cool purple. And so I've been kind of out of the liquid lipstick era. I like something a bit more hydrating. It's like fun, but it's like a little too cool tone. So I'm going to take this. This is the Juvia's Place, a mauve moment, and just bring in some warmth. So that it's a bit more of like a neutral shade. Or even just like a still cool tone, but it's just like not as crazy. So this is the finished makeup look. Again, like this is kind of my natural, not natural, but my like go-to everyday glam. It's, I think, wearable. You can definitely like spice it up with a bright lipstick if you're trying to go from day to night. But I also think it's like not so crazy that like... You can't just show up to school or work like this. Like, I think it's really fun. And um, so, yeah, this is how I do the makeup for my face with a bit of glamour magic thrown in there. And, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for asking questions. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye!